Welcome to the Edge Up Podcast with your hosts Reed and Glenn from Hawaii Trading Academy. I wanna I wanna throw the question to you, Gun. Like, what is define define success, man? What is your what do you see as success? And I'll I'll be happy to share mine after the success yeah. specifically in trading and trading. In trading, right? Success in trading, right? Um, there's many way people who define it differently. Of course, we all have our definitions, but um, and you think it also changes as you yourself as a trader, like for me, you know, the success changes throughout the years, right? Obviously, when I first got into it, I'm like, oh, I want to shit make a ton of money, you know. But I think as we grow, uh, success can look like a instead of me being stuck glued to the charts, I want to be enjoying my time and freedom with the ones I love doing the things that I love to do, you know, um, and seeing trading as a, a way to create income and create buy your time back. Um, but also as in when it comes down to like the daily things, like success in trading is being able to execute your strategy as best as you can. Um, don't allow emotions to make your financial decisions. Um, don't repeat mistakes every, you know, day in, day out. Like you're growing, you're learning. Yes, always learning and even meeting wonderful, great, awesome people in the community, you know, and and, and using the money to help better the world, you know? And that's what success looks like to me as a trader, um, of course, you know, people get caught up in the, 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 the fancy blingy stuff, but ultimately to me, um, that's what that means. What about you, bro? Uh, along the same lines, man, like I, I immediately think of like success as a, it's a vehicle or trading is the tool or the vehicle to success and success looks like living life on my own me by my own means, you know, the way I want to live it doing the things I want to do when I want to do it with whomever I want to do it with, you know, I think that's the real definition of success. I, I kind of define it like, or I see it as let's say something comes up and you just don't want to do anything for the day. Like you, you could choose to do that. It's choice. Yeah. It's freedom of choice almost. Um, whereas like if you're stuck at a, a desk job or like, stuck at a, at a specific job you have to either tell someone you know you have to have an, a valid reason or excuse and you you basically you're responsible to someone else and rather than just yourself so yeah. um that that's a, in a definition of success there's a time and place for the fancy travels the fancy luxury goodness of life that modern society calls luxuries but um, I think at a deeper, meaningful level, success is, yeah. There, and to a sense, there's like, it's doing what we do, man, is just helping people get better at being more, uh, being, being better, just being better in general, helping yeah. people be better, helping traders be better traders and people. Yeah. Best yeah. version it, of themselves. I think like success is, um, you know, it could be the end goal for many people. For some people, it could be just like a, a moving target. You know, we hit different milestones in our lives and we know that we have more in the tank as far as potential. And so it could lead to bigger uh, things. Like I've never thought, dreamt about like doing the things we're doing now, you know, like it wasn't on my radar back then. Um, and it just shows, I think what's more important than I think hitting success itself is the road to success, mm. you know, and there's yes. a few things that come up with that, right. Is consistency as we were kind of started off the podcast here. Um, the consistency, bro, like, like you mentioned, there's only 90, what 95% of the traders fail um, in, in a prop firm challenge, for example. And that role to success is only available to the five percent of the population or or the people who are in the in the field trying. And so what is the like definite the 
the defining or or separator between that those two groups you know so i was looking up about like success and like these statistics and everything because we always hear it right and it's kind of funny man because like when we hear that stat why does everyone focus on the bigger number like everyone focuses on oh n only 90 percent or 90 percent of traders fail 95 percent of traders fail all right, so why are we focusing on the failure rate? Why not? Let's look at the success rate. So 5% succeed. And what are those 5%ers doing? You know, and fun fact, there's a prop firm called 5%ers. Uh, just, just wanted to throw that out there. If you wanted to get funding through them, there is a, a firm called 5%ers. Uh, but anyways, um, I think Mike Belfort said it best. He said like success is, su is sustaining the energy to improve daily. You must become an elite performer and you do that through your willingness to learn. And it's not belittling another person's success or bringing up how hard it is to be consistent in this industry. Uh, because like we said, do you want to be part of that 95% or do you want to be at the, the 5%? So Mike Belfort puts it clearly that like the 5% of the people, they're not looking at others and saying, why they can't be successful or why it's so hard or what consistency really is the five percenters are doing the consistent thing and that is they're actually doing the work they're actually putting in the time to learn to open their mind to say okay i was wrong how can i improve i don't want to be part of the, that percentage i want to be a five percent what are you doing right you know they're asking those questions they're and they're doing the work and so he also um, talks about it, about in this post on how um, the best traders, like you could uh, come in and do the work. And there's traders who have actually been able to trade prop firms money and everything. But the moment that they start deviating from the learning process, meaning like they, they're starting, they think they're too good, that they can't fail that's when they actually let the, these traders go off of their floor because that is a true sign of, of failure is you know, you're the unwillingness to learn, the unwillingness to change, to, to say that you were wrong. And so he's like, they're plain and clear with their rules on at, at SMB capital. Right. And so I think that's a good rule of thumb, thumb to follow. Yeah. I mean, there was a saying I heard, like, if you're not growing, you're dying. Right. So like one of the biggest, uh, of things that um that people what do you how was that stat the biggest things that people don't realize you know that dream killers is comfort comfort mm -hmm. kills guys you know those traders you're talking about they they made their way up and they're successful they just got comfortable they got comfortable because they made a decision it and it comes down to that making a decision to be better like you have to in order it you in order for anything else to happen, you have to bet on yourself, believe in yourself, you know, know that, make the decision, hey, I do, I want to change my life for the better. I want to go ahead and do that one more thing, spend that extra 15 minutes studying, 20, one hour, you know, daily, or, you know, uh, put down the, the phone on social media because I don't need any more distractions. So you guys got to make that decision because like, little by i mean if you if you're not strict on yourself then you know how you do anything is how you do everything if you like half-ass it you know i admit i have my times i'll half-ass things you know but that the end result i get is not the thing i want you know and so it kind of puts me back in line i mean we just finished uh trade 60 and like we like to do this right away right after the holidays because you know, everyone lets loose, they lose, you know, um, on, on the holidays, we just, you know, take, go down the speed and enjoy the time, enjoy the food, of course, snacking too much, but, uh, that the whole pro pro, um, program with trade 60 is like, here's, here's our blinders in a way, here's our structure of how we're going to do things in a day. Like we have that list. We're going to do the workout. We're going to go drink the water, do the re reading. And, you know, that puts us into a good momentum to kick off the year, you know? 
And um, yeah, it goes back to the daily thing. Like, am I, you got to make the decision, right? Decide on yourself. Like, am I going to go ahead and do the thing I don't want to do? You know, they always have that saying, you know, do the things you love and you won't work a day in, in your life, right? Sometimes you got to do the things you hate, guys, you know? Yeah. You, you got to go to the gym when you you just dislike it at the most. You got to go and spend that extra time to go study. You got to read the books, watch the videos, reach out to the people that might be intimidating to you or, or you know, um, maybe humble yourself and actually just listen and learn, right? Um, always try to stay the student, you know? Um, and that's something that Reed and I, we care as a trait. Like we are learning every day. Like there's no, um, you know, I don't, we'll never get to that point where we're like, oh yeah, we're, we're too good to, to learn, you know, like, I think when you, when you, there's that other saying, right? Uh, 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 a closed mind is worth, uh, worth as like a closed parachute, you know, like, you can't there's there's nothing like you're you're so enclosed in your beliefs and thoughts and the world's out there eight billion people right there's for the traders there's going to be a, a minute a small group of successful traders who's consistent like why don't you just figure out instead of focusing on a 95 failure i mean i think society is attracted to negative news that's part of the reason why we're always attracted to that number Figure out what those five percent guys are doing. The market wizards, the uh, you know, the legends, the uh, great traders of that's, that's that's on X. Like, just find a few mentors and dive into them. What are they doing right? What are they doing that um, helps them consistently outperform the market for 10, 20, 30 years? You know, there's these guys that put out track records. They have to. It's public. They have to be public record. Thirteen F reports what are these funds doing and that kind of goes back to when you wake up am i gonna get better today uh said no what were was that track record that you posted it was gold right a gold gold yeah it was um this hedge fund in europe they're currency traders f uh forex but they only do gold cross pairs so gold yen gold euro gold usd yeah that was cool so i brought it up because um if you guys don't know glenn posted a, a track record in our discord by the way our discord link is below in the links um but in this this screenshot that he sent it showed they're losing months right it showed some losing months but of course overall they were profitable and, and they netted green but the point of this little segment I wanted to point to is that there's two things here is you could be consistent in one way, but it's not moving the needle forward. So we're always consistent. That That's something that I want all traders to understand that's listening is that we're always consistent. We could consistently be opening the charts, looking at the charts, placing the wrong trade, and then closing the screen. You're doing something consistently in that sense. But how to become better as a trader is we need to move the needle forward. And that means logging everything, journaling everything. I don't know one successful trader who doesn't track every single trade or what they're doing in the market. Whether you're a scalper, a day trader, or a swing trader, they have a system of record keeping and they make time to review their performance. So you can't just be firing away rapid machine gun and then wondering why, oh, and then focus on, yep, 95% of people fail. I got to be, I got to do more. You definitely do got to do more, but not more of the same thing. You got to change it and do more of something else. And that's, that's one definition of consistency as far as action goes. Now I want to talk about more minute details in like specifically trading results. Now referring back to the, that firm in Europe, you're talking about Glenn is the, the gold uh, Forex pairs uh, traders is the fact that they'll go on four to six months in profit, lose two to three months, and then again, gain it all back and more at the end of the year, right? So the point being, you could win six months and then lose three months, and it doesn't mean you're not consistent. Markets change. People go through ups and downs in life, whatever it is. You don't know 
and they don't know unless it's documented in journal. Oh, okay, so during this time, this was before the great housing collapse or something. And you don't know it while you're going through it, but you looking back, you will know it. Oh, that's why the market was behaved this way. That's why my strategy didn't fit this market for three months because of this tariff that happened. And that's why I the, my strategy had a rough patch. So again, you could lose months on end. You could lose years on end. It doesn't mean you are a failure or your system has failed. Again, markets change, but the point being, journal everything consistently. Be, be have good consistent habits there, because the that's part of the process. You're gonna you're gonna learn. You're gonna discover who you are and how your system functions during certain times. That's all I really got to say, man. Yeah, it's just pretty much gathering the data and then putting it and and documenting it, as Reed was saying, um, and just building those those small minute details, you know, is compounding work, compounding your actions that what you'll be doing like a daily, you know, it stacks up. And at the end of the day, you, you gotta look back and do a, a self-reflection on yourself, like, hey, am I if I have this goal here, am I doing the daily actions I need to do in order for me to hit that goal? You know, am I way off? Right. And, and, and it's just a matter of that. And it's so easy to get suckered and uh, distracted by social media, get influenced by it, by all these different things, these facades, these egos, um, but at the end of the day, like you got to figure out how to protect your space, protect your head space and keep your focus on the things you want to do. You know, I think that's a big thing too. people, um, they drift off hmm, so much because, and they get distracted from the main thing. You know, you want to keep the main thing, the main thing, like stop trying to like, just do this one thing because, oh, I'm going to jump to crypto because it's, it's picking up now. You know, those are, if you have a valid strategy that tells you to do so, then okay. But well, why are you gonna do that? Well, because the hype's there. You know, <laughs> these the the track record we're talking about, like the guy was asked, "Hey, how come you don't put crypto in your portfolio?" And in he has a set criteria for him to be even enter the market. Other that, other than that, it's it doesn't really exist in his mind. Why is that? And that leads him to produce the numbers he's producing. You know, I think since in inception, 75% return. Right? Well, which one is this one? Which one is that? The, the gold, the gold hedge fund. Oh, the oh that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah since 2015, I'm reading the track record. You know, they had their first year they had 5.2% return. Next year's 36% return. 24% return followed by minus 6%, you know, and, and you fast forward it, the cumulative return since they started was 75%. Wow. So if, and they're managing over a billion. Okay. Wow. Over a billion. And so for someone, some, some person on Twitter X, Hey, you guys should add crypto to your portfolio. It's picking up like dude. I keep the main thing, the main thing and it's gold. <laughs> sir that's it dude and i think um that makes me think like um a lot of the the crypto traders they're they're on the younger side you know and uh thanks to robin hood that's why I'm really exposing uh people who never thought they would trade into the trading space and these kids are yellowing money and uh they're getting a um, Bad amount of returns. I'm talking like two, three hundred percent returns on one tiny position, and they think all the markets are that way. And then when you're not diversified, you're a dinosaur. Right? We're dinosaurs, man. If we're not diversified that way, but I would love to have a seventy-five percent return consistently over decades versus a month of two hundred, three hundred percent return just to yolo it and lose it all over the next six months you know what i mean yeah so i'd that's the kind of consistency i encourage our listeners to look for is you know those consistent two to three percent month returns because 
and that's another another thing I thought of just now is like these kids they want to have these hundred two hundred three hundred percent returns and I'm not even just talking about kids I'm sorry I keep saying that <laughs> but like Don't date just like age just bro <laughs> I know man uh, these tra <laughs> but traders want these returns right because they don't have enough capital but what if you had a million dollar in capital or under under management you know one percent two percent a month sounds pretty luxurious to me whereas like they want to make that off of one position overnight and that's just it's possible but it's also very extremely risky and i just i don't encourage that but i'll i'll take it all back and i want to bring it back to you glenn i wanted to ask you a question before we get too carried away here uh we're talking about consistency man and um the end of 2023 didn't you have like two we both experienced it two losing months in a row yeah yeah it was a september october, october for september me. october yeah. yeah right and then so i'm, I'm going to intervene here again is like glenn experienced and i was with him experiencing this drawdown of two months right glenn did any point during those two months of red did, were you like i'm not a consistent trader I'm not successful. Like what was going through your mind in that sense? Cause I just want to point out that where Glenn is at now, and we'll get into it where Glenn's at now in his funding and his strategy and his consistency and everything to that. I, I just want to hear your, your thoughts, bro. Yeah. I mean, um, that's part of the game, right? Drawdowns for someone to enter into trading and not, think about or plan for drawdown periods um they must they're they're missing a piece of knowledge or they're missing experience you know um, because drawdowns will happen we see it time and time again people who are managing tons of money um the, if they don't get a hold of the drawdowns they end up blowing up right and so for me of course september was my birthday month and i was like yeah, yeah. I got this right. Of, of course, the little part of me, like the little voice, like, oh, I'm gonna make it big. It's my birthday month. I'm lucky. Nope. Dude, Marky gonna tell you what it's gonna do. Um, going through September, I think it was a, a bigger loss than October. Um and for me, like I just wanted the month to end when I was at the end of September. <laughs> I was like, oh, I had to celebrate my birthday dinner, whatever. I'm like, I can't wait till this month is done, you know. Um but I had to keep on trading, right? I had to keep on trading. My I still got my systems in check. I have, um, and you're still logging it. You're still journaling I'm still all those journaling losses, it, right? I have to. I do the monthly review, and then October comes around, and the market isn't looking pretty as well, right? But I have to. I started off the month of October with a nice gold trade. I think that's where it broke 2100 for the first time i think um but i was able to catch that move but at after that like it was just crappy losses lots of chop but at the same time so what's going through my head at the time was like you know i have to just take it one day at a time i have to um it sucks losing but at the same time i cannot have my mind think like oh i need to catch up Oh, I need to do this to because I'm I'm down this much. I'm like I have to come in with a neutral, clean mindset and look at the price at action. Is it conducive to my strategy? Do I place a trade? Is it telling me to get in? Is it telling me to get out? And this is where risk management, you know, it was a good reminder how how I was able to um, withstand these losses because my risk management, I did not leverage up when I'm in the losing period. You know, I stuck to my rules. I stuck to my foundations of um, making the more logical um, action decision rather than the emotional. So after October, you risk down. You risk yeah. down. Yeah, after a certain point, I have a rule. I think after seven or eight losses, and I'll risk down a little bit more. And that will take me through, of course. And because I know at the end of the day, like I just need a few winners that will clear my losses and then some. And sure enough, I was able to 
withstand um, the October period and November came around. And those first few days of November came around, Santa rally started. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. and oh. so, you know, like that's trading. You have to just be able to live to trade another day, you know. Um, I've made the mistake of blowing the account, my account, and being and really being unable to trade because I have no money to trade. You know, that's a worse position. And hopefully, you know, you don't as a trader starting out, you don't want to be constantly in that position, you know, and because it, it does uh, affect your mind. And so if you are um trading your system and you're in a drawdown. Your risk management and sizing is going to be your safety net. It's your lifeline. And you have to protect it at all costs. Yeah. To me, like you just explained so many ways in, in which you're consistent and that I would define consistency. You know, you you can you were consistent in logging your, your trades through the losses. You're consistent in trading your system that you know works. You didn't try to change it. Uh, you're consistent in just accepting it. I think that's a that's a huge thing. Is like you accept it and moved on. That that's a hard consistency pattern to to develop. But once you get to that level, you you could ever could be where Glenn's at. You know what I mean? And you're funded now. You're a fu fully funded trader, and I think that's it's just a testament that you don't have to win every single month that's the big point i want everyone to take away here yeah and you could actually lose more as far as streak goes so like you were talking about losing six to eight trades in a row you don't have to win every single trade you don't even have to have a higher strike rate meaning like you don't have, out of 10 trades you don't have to have more than 50 percent right in order to be successful i yep. think in one study the lowest on a system you could have is like uh, um, well, at least a specific system I was looking at through Transpider is 24% strike rate, but like a five to one, you know, and something like that. And you could still be just over break even success. Like it's not a lot, but basically my point being is you don't have to have a high strike rate to succeed in, in the market. So, right, right. I heard this in a podcast from one of the, um, I don't know if it was a market wizard, but he describes trading as like, you know how how you know how they have like the Macy Day parade, right? And yeah. and you, you know people camp spend tons of time to camp out to go get a good spot on the sidewalk, right? So trading is just that, like you know there's a parade coming, right? But all you get daily, you don't know the date and time, but you go and set up your chair on the sidewalk and you wait for that parade, and most of the time it doesn't come, right? And then when you do show up on that day, set up your chair, you sit down, and the parade comes. You get the best seat in the house, and you beat the crowd before, you know, all that happens. Um, and that's what trading is almost. It's it's like you have to be up showing up for that day when the trade comes because um, – and you, you can – you're going to ride that winner. You're going to be able to position yourself to be able to take that opportunity rather than blowing yourself up and then missing it. That's more painful. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to leave this. This is the last. We're going to wind down the conversation here. But I wanted to ask you one last thing here, Glenn, is like um, referring back to, you know, the losing streaks and everything. We all deal with them. I think a lot of uh, traders, they're afraid to accept that it's them that they're it's it's on them it's not the market it's not um their system or anything it's them not being consistent and so I, and i think they're just not comfortable confronting themselves mm. and uh, one they don't have that information because they're not journaling everything but when they are journaling everything and they come across you know six to eight losses in a row this is kind of a double-edged question here is what how do you get comfortable with with sharing your struggles, like just with me and even just yourself, it starts with yourself first, right? Yeah. You have to confront your own struggles. Then you're, you're confident enough to bring it to someone outside of yourself, which is like someone like me or the, our community at HTA. And then, so 
it makes me think like if you don't struggle you won't learn so my question to you is, is like what were some some things that you learn in that that two month drawdown or like just maybe it doesn't have to be that two months but when you do encounter the those sequence of, of losers like what's something you learn that you could take away that maybe you want to bless us with some wisdom here man uh, that's a good question dude i mean there's there's different layers to this and one point that you did bring up is a community um having a trading partner i mean of course when you're going through a tough time you let your yourself know plus you and you let your spouse know if you do if you are married right they're gonna know they get the behind the scenes access and we can bitch to them all we want and you know because they're not keeping up with the markets my wife is gonna be like, oh it's okay you know um but you know they just don't have that understanding and so what i'm saying is you know find that per, either that in the other another individual where you can talk trading with because it's good to, you know, just release it or find a community or even find mentors. Uh, mentors, their role, you know, they'll help you in different aspects, especially blind spots. You can have the best notes in the world, document everything you do, right? And you're going to see it from your side only, no matter what. But when you bring in a third person, another person, um, even beyond your your inner circle, they can point out things. And it's really key, I think, to go through that process because one, it brings acceptance. Acceptance that you're in a losing streak or going through a tough patch um, and being aware of where you're at in your trading, okay? That's one. It's not going to be all the kind of uh, roses and in, you know, smooth pathways, roadways, there's going to be tons of potholes and uh, um, roadblocks, um, detours, and being aware is a key thing. So if you are trying to get into, find a community or a person or a mentor, you know, really know the like that they will bring out different perspectives in what you're going through. So you got to be aware. And then two is, you know, you first, then you got to accept it, right? Three, then you can go ahead and reflect. And then four is to go ahead and put into action uh, with, with a correction or improvement. And, you know, like we go back to our um, community, you know, that's what we're helping traders do. In our community, you know, we're providing them a platform to share their experiences. Um, we do want the the one on one coaching, and we feel like we're empowering the clients or the students who want to learn, and giving them that piece of confidence, that boost of confidence that they never knew they had, you know, and that's gonna help you carry and sh kind of shortcut the learning curve. Everyone will have that learning curve coming into the markets, you know, but if you are utilizing the resources that's out there and, and, and make it, making the decision that you want to get better, the, 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 the coaching, the mentoring is, is definitely a big, big help. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, man. You made me think of a echo chamber, you know, um, yeah. I've been part of like a lot of trading communities where it's just an echo chamber of of the guy who founded it or the, the team that founded it. It's just the same thing over and over and over again. If people weren't successful, they would be like, you could do it. You could do it. You could do it. You could do it. Like all that. And that's great, but there's no actionable steps. There's no accountability there in the sense of like, okay, why, what happened here? You know, asking the tough questions. And I think something we do different at HTA is we ask those tough questions. Um, it's almost uncomfortable to answer, but once you answer those questions, those tough questions about your own trading and about yourself that opens the doors. It opens the doors to change. It opens the doors to success. It opens the, so many doors uh, to, for yourself too. And I think that's the best way is if you're finding yourself listening to this podcast and you're not asking the tough questions or you're in a, in a place where they just, 
they don't answer those tough questions in there. It's an echo chamber. Just yeah. uh, reconsider. Maybe start asking yourself those hard questions that you don't want to answer and then answer them on your own. Answer them in your own deep consciousness and then begin to share it with your close friends and then maybe just a stranger. I think that's the best way forward. And uh, yeah. yeah, man, I, I really, I love this topic. I love this conversation that we're having. And I appreciate your time, man. Thank you. Of course, man. Thanks for listening, guys. Whether you're looking to improve your trading mindset and growth, we'll provide you with the tools, tips, and inspiration you need to make your next breakthrough. So tune in and let's edge up together.